In this video I want to show you what image-based lightning exactly means and how to work with image-based lightning. Here you can see a sphere which reflects specula and a sphere that does not reflect specula. There are currently simply two material properties. If you look to the left side, you can see one of them is chrome and the other one plastiline. And every one of you can well imagine which sphere has which material assigned. Let's clarify first of all what a reflection is. In principle we have two light sources, either the direct light as well as the indirect light sources. But how does indirect light act? Any kind of direct light such as the sunlight or a light bulb hits an object surface. The object absorbs a part of the light and emits parts of the light and thereby we take subject of the object and its color. This light is emitted either specularly or diffusely. And you can easily see that the left hand sphere emits a mirroring image. That's why the angle at which the light arrives corresponds to the angle at which the light exits. That's why you can see the surroundings because it's reflected. At a diffuse reflection like the case on the right sphere, the light is reflected diffusely. The reflected light is no more parallel, it is more kind of distorted and this is mostly because the surface is perhaps a bit rougher or not mirror smooth. So light is scattered in all possible directions and the environment will not be mirrored. However, bright spots from the surroundings are more noticeable because they might emit more light than dark spots from the surrounding. So we simply have two situations here, once the environment is reflected, once the environment is reflected mirroring and once the environment becomes diffusely reflected. Now we have the following problem. Here you can see clearly these three bright spots on the left sphere. Meaning at these spots very much of the light arrives and is emitted. By comparison you only see one spot on the right sphere. Let's take a closer look at the shadow. You can clearly see that the shadow cast is more like the right sphere than the reflection on the left sphere. So something is wrong in this scene. Although an ambient image is used to generate light which leads to this reflection. Strangely however only as a reflection and not as a diffuse reflection. The first proof that the image based lightning is not enabled at all by the way is this preview, preview render. Because image based lightning is actually only calculated with full render. And after having enabled full render the following happens. You can now see three bright spots on the right sphere. This means that the surrounding image is not only used for mirroring but also for lightning which is reflected diffusely. The shadow meanwhile has disappeared. This is because this extra lighting which was still active is now disabled. There was even no lighting enabled except for this additional lighting. The image based lightning was disabled and yet there was a shadow cast. And this additional lighting is turned off now. And you can review this in the scene editor. Below lights you will see three defined scene lights and none of them will be used with the advanced studio image based lighting. If you enable this jack you can see the lighting is in use and cast a shadow. And as you can see here the shadow type is soft edges. But the rendering is right now anything else but soft. As you see here, via shadows, these simulated shadows can still be adjusted. And here, the smoothness can still be adjusted. By the way, the rendering which you see here has nothing to do with the final static image that we'll create with the Ray Trace Studio. The shadow accuracy cannot be directly adjusted for Ray Trace Studio. And also, image based lightning cannot be directly turned off. What we can do in Raytrace Studio is define intensity of light. 
Beside the quality, of course, it is a basic concept of the Ray Trace Studio not to disable things that make a picture appear realistic. So to say, all the cast shadows are made based on this image-based lightning. All the lightning is depending on the lightning image. The lighting image, by the way, can be selected here via global illumination environment, via a predefined palette, or by opening a user-defined image. The image can be twisted with this slider, but this is the only attitude that actually has an impact in the Ray Trace Studio. Even the lightning image blur has no impact. But what does lighting image blur mean? At the moment, when I set this to none, you cannot see any effect concerning the image reflection. Blur simply means that the large number of pixels from the surrounding image, which are used to light our scene, are simply converted into a smaller number of pixels. The picture is coarsened, so to speak, and this results in these many spots because just certain ingredients of the picture are simply summarized. This should not be set to none, it should be set to high. This gives you a very homogeneous course. By the way, this has no effect on a static image from the Ray Trace Studio at all. Can you see the mistake in the picture? We are currently in the Advanced Studio, the image-based lighting is on. In addition, we have one of our advanced lights on and thus this extra shadow. But there is no reflection between the objects. Which should be the case, the specular reflection should be approximately here. And this is not done despite this full render mode. This is actually calculated in the Ray Trace Studio. Incidentally, you should not use fast interactive for reflective materials here, because here as well, the image-based lighting is used for illumination, and a shadow is being generated, but reflective materials are not calculated. This is meaning you should definitely use quality interactive or photoreal. The mirroring is calculated and the image-based lighting is included. And if you go one step further, then you have even in a static image a refraction of the light calculated. But this mainly affects the transparent materials.